Come with me to Philippians chapter 2 and verse 24. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 24. Verse, verse 4. Verse 4. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Amen. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Can I have any other translations that are available? Right. Which one is this? Message. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. Amen. Can I have another one? Just keep on. NIV. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Hallelujah. Now tonight, my message is others. Now many years ago, a great man of God, William Booth, General William Booth, the founder of the Great Salvation Army denomination, uh, sent a telegram to his leaders who have gathered to hear from him. And uh, when the leaders heard that he was sending to them a telegram, they were in great anticipation. What is it that our general has to say to us? Now finally the day came they got it. The telegram was released. And uh, they were all waiting for a very long, you know, message. But to their surprise, the telegram contained only one word. And that word was Addis. It was a shock to them. They were stained. They were stained because it's like, what type of message is this? But I believe that as they meditated, you know, over the message, God spoke to each one of them. Ladies and gentlemen, the message of others is very important for the church today. Because most of the church today has forgotten about the fact that Christianity is not about ourselves. But Christianity is about others. Hallelujah. Most of the church today has become selfish. Self-centered. We, are, we have overindulged in self-preservation. It's me and me and me, my, my mother, my father, my children, my money, my business, my job, my interests, my promotion, my abilities, my joy, you know, and, and actually, this is the spirit of the world, but unfortunately, this spirit has entered the church and has eaten up the church. Most of us don't think about others. But General William Booth was reminding his leaders that serving the Lord is not about yourself, but it's about others. Hallelujah. Amen. And um, when we look at Jesus Christ, the life of Jesus Christ, you will see in Jesus somebody 
who did not think about himself. Now, if Jesus had thought about himself, he would not have come to this earth. This earth is a very dangerous place to come. Even if you are God. Even if you are God. It is a very dangerous, it's a place full of wicked men, disrespectful people, people who are ungrateful, unthankful, I get what I'm saying. Bishop Dad says that if you remove demons, the next group of people who are very evil are humans. And it is so true. And it is so true. But you see, Jesus had a certain mind. And the mind that Jesus had is what we have in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 4. Look at it again in the King James. This is the mind that Jesus had. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Verse 5. Verse 5. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So this mind... Of thinking about others was the mind that Jesus had. And if that is the mind that Jesus had, the church is supposed to be following Jesus. The church is supposed to be following Jesus. And if the church was to follow Jesus, then the church would be thinking about others. Let this mind be in you which also was in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God taught it not robbery to be equal to God but made himself of no reputation and came to the face of this earth having accepted to be in the form of a man. That is the mind that Jesus had and that is the mind that Believers must have if we are to be able to serve the Lord and to fulfill the will of God for us as believers. The reason why the church today is limited in its impact, the reason why the church today has not been able to affect the world in the way that it should with the power of God with the blood of Jesus, with the word of the Lord, is because most of the church is inward looking. But God wants us to have a certain mind. Hallelujah. Now, the message of others, this message Tell us a couple of things. The first thing that this message tells us is that the message of others is that others exist. Others exist. Hallelujah. God wants the church to remember. God wants every believer to remember that others exist. Apart from your children, apart from your wife, Apart from your household, apart from your family, apart from your church in Ghana, there are others. There are others. God wants us to think about others. Now, when you look at Jesus, all throughout his life on earth, he kept on thinking about others. Mark chapter 1 verse 35. Mark chapter 1 verse 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Continue. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. 
Verse 38. And he said unto them, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also. For there too came I forth. Now listen to the words of Jesus. Jesus said, let us go to the other towns. Now, other towns means that they have been to some others already. They have been to some already. But Jesus said, we have been to some, but there are some more. There are some more that exist. There are some more that we have not been. There are more people, there are more cities, there are more villages, there are more towns, there are more nations where we have not been to. Let us go to those ones also. He said that I may preach there also. So if you have preached here, it is not enough. The time has come for you to go to other places also to preach. You see, that was the mind of Jesus. That was the mind of Jesus. Let us go to other places. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, Jesus said, and ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then you shall be witnesses both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth. Now, once again, what was Jesus saying? Jesus was saying, there is Jerusalem. But just in case you finish with Jerusalem, remember that there's also Judea. And there is Samaria. And there's the utmost part of the earth. There are so many people. Jesus was talking about many places, many peoples, many nations, many tongues, many different kinds of locations where he says, think about those places also. When you look at a church today, you can see that we are just satisfied with what we have. The message that God gave to me to bring to CM as you are fasting and waiting and watching is that the time has come for us to think about others. Other nations. Other communities. Other peoples. Other locations. Is it like we have been serious telling you. When he came to our church. You see he, one of the things that really shocked me was the fact that there were people in those areas. And I'm telling you if you see the kinds of people who are there. The kinds of people, ordinary, very poor. Most of them are uneducated. Most of them are worshiping idols. A lot of them are into juju. The whole of those lands have been taken over by the power of darkness. But you see, that is why Jesus is saying, that's why Jesus is saying, think about others. Now, I remember about two years ago, you know, Bishop called me. And he said, you've been at Kualagona for some time. Let's think about some others. Yeah. And I was dragging my feet. And he, was saying, and he said, let's think about others. Let's think about others. Let's think about others. Go to, go to others. Go to others. So we, we just got up. Parked and arrived in the bush. We are actually in the bush. But I tell you, right there in the bush, there are people that Jesus died for. There are people there who need salvation. There are people there that Satan has taken over completely. Now, as we are sitting in the comfort of our homes, feeling happy, Singing a little song. Do you understand it? Feeling blessed of ourselves. It is important for us to understand 
the reason why the church exists and the reason why the church exists is that we will go to others and bring them the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ hallelujah others others what is the practical at play of the fact that others exist If we are going to put this message into practice, then the first thing we are going to do is that we are going to rise up to fulfill the Great Commission. We are going to rise up to fulfill the Great Commission. You see, the Great Commission is about others. I want to say it again. That the great commission going into all the nations and preach Christ and bring salvation is about others. But it is not being done. No, it is not being done. It's not being done. Christians are very happy sitting in our homes enjoying ourselves enjoying our Christianity we are enjoying our Christianity we are enjoying the fact that we are saved and our children go to uh, Sunday school and our children are not going to the night class and when they go out they come but that is not enough that is not enough that is not enough God is speaking to every member, every member of CM that have the mind that others exist and that we must reach out to others. In most of our churches today, evangelism has been thrown out. In most of our churches today, a couple of years ago, I was driving to the city of Accra and I saw a, big, a billboard. Evangelism Conference by Reverend Sid Mensa. I saw it at uh, uh, Kaneshi, uh, Kaneshi Polyclinic. I was coming down from the Kodesh and I saw, when I saw it, I said, wow, I've never seen anything like this before. A conference called evangelism conference I've written a, a little book about the Holy Spirit Reverend see that story is in it I, wa, I was totally shocked you see because what do we see on our billboards what do we see seven steps to how you can move from an unmarried lady to be married in the next three months. Breakthrough. Promotion. How you can be lifted up to heaven. You know. All kinds of things. Now I am not saying that those things are not good. But what I am saying is that. Actually they have also mis misplaced. And overtaken. And diverted us from the core message of the church. Which is going into the whole world. And preach the gospel. And the reason why that is that is because we have forgotten that others exist. Yeah. Others exist. Anytime God speaks two times, you have to take note of it. Yeah. And the commission to go out there to win the loss, Jesus said it many times. Now let's look at it. Matthew chapter 28 from verse 19. Matthew chapter 28 from verse 19. Go ye therefore, maybe from verse 18, so we know that it was the words of Jesus. From verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore 
and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things for so I have commanded you, and, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. This, these are the, these were the last words of Jesus Christ before he left. And the last words of any man are very important. There is nobody here, there's nobody watching me in your home, in America, in Britain, wherever you are, that if we're just about to leave, if the Lord told you, listen, I'm taking you away in two days, that you call your children, and when you call your children, you tell them, look, let me tell you, Jones, when, when, when I go, make sure that you, you, you bath every day. You don't like washing your clothing. Make sure that you wash your clothing. You don't like arranging your room very well. Your room is too disorganized. Make sure that after my death, your room will be organized. That is not what you'll be saying. What you say will be the most important words. And ladies and gentlemen, I came to remind us that when Jesus said we should go into the whole world and preach for men to be saved, those were the most important words ever spoken by Jesus to us. Yes. But you see, they are also the very words that the, the church has thrown away. The church has thrown evangelism, soul winning, reaching out away from the church. When you preach about evangelism, you are not powerful. You are not powerful. You are preaching basics. We want something very powerful. We, we want something that is deep. Hallelujah. But you see, the scriptures talk about the simplicity of the gospel. The reason why you are calling so winning ABCs and shallow is because you are backslidden and you are blind. Yeah. And it starts with us, the pastors. It starts with us, the pastors. We, the pastors, are the people who have led the people, we have led the people astray. Because you see, the people are what we hear from the pulpit. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And hearing comes from what we are saying from the pulpit. I hear you've gone home. I hear you've gone home. Those of you watching, you know, on Instagram, YouTube, you know, are, are you there or you, 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 you don't want basic message? Amen? Yeah. Mark 16, 15. Mark 16, 15. Let me remind you of the Great Commission. Because I'm sure that many of us have forgotten about it. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Hello? These are the words of Jesus. These are the words of Jesus. Others. Go ye into the whole world. Others. Others. You see now, today look at us. God has reduced all of us to nothing. Irrational around. Traveling here for business. Going here for conference. Going here. Where are you going? Where are you going? You realize that nothing else matters. The only thing that matters right now, the only thing that matters is our lives in Christ and what we are doing with it. Hello? Yeah. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world 
and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. People are dying. Coronavirus, yes, has killed a lot of people. But I can tell you something that has killed billions, continue to kill millions today. And that is the lack of salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. Christians are the most murderous in the world. Yeah. We are the most murderous because you see, because of our refusal to think about others, we have allowed and we still are continuing to allow millions upon millions to go into inter- eternal death. Not only physical death, but eternal death. Because you see, when you die physically, that's not the end. No, that's not the end. Based on who you are, that is not the end. If you are saved, the Bible said, therefore, we know that to be absent from the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. So, our inaction to push the gospel, to preach the gospel, as we have concentrated on ourselves, how we can eat, how we can accumulate more blessings and prosperities and more cars and build more houses and then how bigger and bigger of this world that that is what is making people go to eternal death and today wherever you are hearing me from God is saying think about others they are others they are others Luke chapter 24 from verse 45. Hallelujah. Amen. See and we are blessed to have a man of God. Who sat is for souls. But are we following him? Do we have his heart? God said. My son give me your heart. Which means that you can have sons who don't have your heart. Amen. I got that. Then open here their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Continue. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. For what purpose? For what purpose? For what purpose? Why did Christ die? And why did Christ wake up? For what purpose? And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached. Not that be preached. Not perhaps. Not if we want. Not if we are happy. Not if we are not happy. Not if we can choose or we don't choose. But that repentance and remission of sins should, should, should be preached. Should be preached. Should be preached. In his name among all nations. Now take note, among all nations, not only in Ghana, not only in Nigeria, not only in West Africa, not only in East Africa, not only in South Africa, not only in Europe, not only in the Caribbean, but in all nations. Are you seeing right there? Are you seeing right there? Yeah. Beginning at Jerusalem. And look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. And ye are witnesses of these things. And ye are witnesses of these things. What he's talking about. We should be witnesses of it. Hallelujah. We have misused the Holy Spirit in the church. And I'll come to that in a second. John chapter 20. Verse 21. I'm reminding you of what we are supposed to think about. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, 
as my father has sent me, even so send I you. The church has been sent. When, when you are sent, you don't sit, you go. Hello? When you are sent, you don't sit, you go. But most of the church has not even risen up. We are not even bothered. We are not bothered. That is why, Reverend Steve, when I saw that your banner, you know what I called you and I told you about it? I said, no, 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 no. This is an unusual man. This is an unusual man. Evang- conference on evangelism. Come and let's talk about soul winning. No. When we gather, we want to talk about what leather of shoes. Is it alligator? Is it leopard? And I'm saying that it starts from us, the pastors. We are the greatest deceivers of the people, the pastors. And, and I have no apology to say that. Yeah. Yeah. That is why most of the world is not saved. That is why most of our cry is not saved. The average size of a church is 70 people. When you see Robert, Robert here, when we have eight churches, uh, eight services on a Sunday, no, these are just a few. These are just a few. These are just a few. The majority of our churches are empty. Empty. On a Sunday morning, there are more people at the beach than in our churches. More people at the drinking pubs and other places of entertainment. Turn on your TV and watch a football match at Old Trafford in, in, in Manchester in the UK. You will see 80,000 people have got it. Hello? And how many people do we have in our churches? Empty. Empty. Because we are thinking about our stomach. We are, we are thinking about more profit. More profit. Where else can I go to impress people that I'm a great person? That is the mind of the church today. We are not thinking about others. But when a soul winning man of God, filled with the spirit of God, filled with the burden of God, filled with passion for the things of God, gathered his leaders, he said, think about others. Stop thinking about yourself. Our church members come to church and we must preach to make them happy. I always say that if you're a pastor and you want your church to be full, every pastor's church, if you're a pastor, you are listening to me, I want to give you a strategy. Even though you have not met for a long time, the day that you know you meet, use this strategy. Your church before. Go on TV or radio, tell your people that on that day, everybody is going to have some money, some food, special oil will be distributed that will make new jobs, visas, you know, are easy to come by. You are going to connect people. You are going to arrange for people to get married and things like that. Your church will be full. Your church will be full. And the people who come earlier are your members who have not stepped in your church for the past five years. They'll be shoving people off at the gate and say, listen, when we're building the church, where were you? And then at the end of that service, Announce that God will in next week Sunday when we meet. We we'll all go out into the communities. After prayer and praise and worship, we we'll all go into the community and witness to them so that we can come to Christ. And I can assure you that that church will finish. And if you think that what I'm saying is not to try it, you see it for yourself. 
That shows you the state of the church. That shows you the state of the church of Jesus Christ right now. A service church. A self-centered church. But God is saying to all of us, the time has come. I need my people to rise up, put on a new mind. May God give you a new mind. And it is the mind of having others. Others. Thinking about others. Being burdened for others. Hello? In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul begins to talk about his sufferings as an apostle. Christ! I was involved in shipwreck. And he goes on in, in, in hunger, in thirst, in fasting often, in the cold. Hallelujah! But look at verse 28 of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. Now look at it. Maybe we should go through some of the things that, you know, he went through. Because in our days, we think that serving the Lord means eating and being happy. And drinking and being happy. But, but go to about Maybe verse 20. Hallelujah. For you suffer if a man bring you into bondage. If a man devour you. If a man take off you. If a man exalt himself. If a man smite you on the face. I speak concerning reproach as though we had been weak. How be it? Wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. And are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes above measures. Stripe means caning. Lashing your back. There is lashing. There is pain. There is sacrifice. In following the Lord. In prisons more frequent. In deaths often. Of the Jews. Five times received I 40 stripes. Save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I have suffered shipwreck. And night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often. In Paris of waters, in Paris of rabbits, in Paris by my own countrymen, in Paris by the hidden, in Paris in the city, in Paris in the wilderness, in Paris in the sea, in Paris among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, and in watchings often, in hunger and thirst. See, all these things are part of Christianity. Weariness, pain, hunger, suffering, suffering, pain. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 29 for it is given unto you on behalf of Christ not only to believe on him but also to suffer for his sake. In suffering. Offering. Yeah. Suffering in the church they will live right now. No, we don't want to suffer. This fasting that Reverend Steve has said many of you are not fasting. Don't, don't deceive yourselves. Hallelujah. I think my time is almost left. When did I start preaching? Amen. I'll end and I'll continue tomorrow. Hallelujah. Because the president says we have one hour. We have to obey him. Hallelujah. Go back. Let me end with uh, Second Corinthians. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Beside, now watch this, verse 28. Now after he has listed all these things, Apostle Paul, if this is what you have gone through, 
it is enough. Go and find some place and rest. Marry, have children, travel, move around the world, go on tourism, look for some more fame and some more money. But look at it. After he has listed all that he has gone through, he said, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. In other words, I'm still thinking about others. When I was in the cold, I was thinking about others. When I was being lashed, I was thinking about others. When I was being, you know, uh, when I was naked, I was thinking about others. When I was suffering, I was thinking about others. 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 Church, others. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus. What I'm talking about is not extraordinary. This is the mind that Jesus had. The fact that we don't have that mind shows how far away we are from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture says we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. And if we really have the mind of Christ, we'll be thinking about others. Amen. Others. Thinking about others. Are others saved? Are there other churches? Are there other missions? Are there other pastors? Are there other prophets? Are there other evangelists? Are there other teachers? Are there other helpers? Are we going to others? Are we living for others? Are we spending our time for others? Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 15, he said, I will gladly be spent, spent and be spent for you. Hallelujah. May this mind come back to us. If we are going to be useful to the Lord, if we are going to be useful to the Lord, and you see the world is, is just flowing away before our eyes. We are in the last of the last days. Hello? No, nothing matters anymore. Show me what you are doing that matters. If you like marry right now, you have 10 people in the church, you'll be surprised. You wanted to print 3,000 cards. 10 people. 10. Yeah, and you better marry now because we don't even know what is going to happen next. So all those who are saying, oh, after the COVID, who told you? Marry now. Hallelujah. Others, may God impact your mind with a new mind. Stand your, on your feet. Lift up your two hands. There is only one prayer. For the next five, ten minutes, then I want us to pray. Lord, let me think about others. Lord, let me remember that others exist. Hallelujah. The reason why young men, young ladies don't want to go into ministry today is because they are thinking about themselves. They are not thinking about others. No, you, you can't send, you can't send an Accra that you should go to Zaveluku. To go and start the church. What do you mean by that? No. Yeah. One time I visited one of our missionaries. Somewhere deep in the western region. He had been there for a while. When I came, I said, where's your wife? The wife was from Accra. He said, he, she came and she said that, look. Here. There is no WC, you know, and all that. She can't live here. She can't live here. That is the mind of the church today. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus and in your homes, wherever you are, wherever you are hearing my voice, pray. Holy Spirit, give me a mind for others. 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 Give me a mind of others. Give me a mind for others. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Walk in your room. Walk in your kitchen. Walk in your hall. Walk in your corridor. At your balcony. And pray. And say Lord. And say Lord. Please. 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 
Oh Lord, give us the mind of our days, O oh Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Grant us the grace, O oh Lord, to think about our days in the name of the Lord Jesus. We pray that to Lord, you grant us the grace to have the mindset of Christ to think about our days to go in the name of Jesus.